Hi scholars, welcome to Science with Miss Ramirez. That's me. All right, last week we talked about a book called Hey Water, and I asked you three questions. What you know about water, what you want to learn about water, and what you learned about water. Now your responses were amazing, and what I got is that you guys learned so much about water. You learned that water is everywhere. It's in what we drink, it's in the bath, in the pool, it's in the faucet, it's in the rain, everywhere. But you also had really good questions. And one of my favorite questions was, where does water come from? And that got me thinking, where does water come from? So today, we're going to read a book called The Water Cycle to hopefully answer that question for us. Our goal for today is that you'll be able to name and describe the different parts of the water cycle You'll also draw and label the different parts of the water cycle. And lastly, you'll be able to explain where water comes from. All right, let's read our book. The Water Cycle. What do you notice about the title? What do you notice about the title? If you say that there's a lot of rain, you are right. There is a lot of rain. So let's see, maybe... That's something that'll tell us what this book is going to be about. Recycled water. The water now on earth is the same water that has always been here. Luckily, nature recycles water using the water cycle. So the water that we see in our pool, in the ocean, it's been here forever. Hmm, that's interesting. The first step. Evaporation is the first step in the water cycle. The sun heats liquid water. The water changes into a gas called water vapor. The vapor rises into the air. Wow, and if you're confused about what vapor is, look at this picture right here. You see it's kind of like, almost like a smoke, but it's not really. This is vapor because the water from the pond the, is heated up from the sun and it's becoming vapor and it's going up. It's going up. So let's see what happens. Making clouds. Up high, the vapor meets cold air and cools. It turns back into liquid water droplets or freezes into ice crystals. This process is condensation. What is this process? Condensation. Good job. Making clouds. Condensation forms clouds. High Thin cirrus clouds are made from ice crystals. Low, puffy cumulus clouds are full of water droplets. Hmm. So cirrus clouds have, um, are made from ice crystals, and the cumulus clouds are full of water droplets. Coming down, the water droplets or ice crystals in a cloud can get too heavy to stay in the air. They then fall to the ground. This process is precipitation. What is this process? Precipitation. Good job. Precipitation falls in many forms. Rain is liquid water. It falls when the air is warm. Snow is frozen ice crystals. It falls when the air is freezing. Ugh, everyone freeze. <laughs> Sleet and hail are precipitation. Sleet goes from frozen to liquid to frozen again before hitting the ground. Raindrops freeze in the air to form balls of hail. So if you're curious about what hail is, it's this right here. So it's not snow because snow is soft, but hail are like little, little balls that fall from the sky. And they're like ice cubes almost that are falling from the sky. Once, pre once precipitation falls, the water cycle begins again. Nature is a great recycler. Wow, so it's happening all over again. So I want you to pay close attention to this picture right here. Let's go over the different parts of the water cycle. We have evaporation, everyone point up. Evaporation, good job. Then we have condensation, so I want you to form a cloud in the sky. Condensation, good job. And then we have precipitation, now point down precipitation. Good job. And this water cycle keeps going round and round and round. And that's how the water is recycled. Great job, scholars. Kiss your brain. That was such a good book. 
Now, what I want you to do is get your materials and you'll need um, your journal and your pencil. So go ahead and get those materials if you need to, pause this video, and then click play again once you're ready. Okay, now that you have your journal, I want you to look at this um, screen. Your job now is to draw the water cycle. So your first, the first thing you're going to do is draw this water cycle on your journal. Now remember, we don't skip pages in our journal, so make sure that you go to the next page and don't go to the middle of the page, your book or to the back of your book. Uh, make sure that you use the next clean page in your journal to do this diagram. Um, go ahead and get as creative as you want. Make sure that you leave some room because you will be labeling. Second thing you'll be doing is in, um, labeling. The second thing you'll be doing is labeling each part of the water cycle. And you have a word bank here to help you. Go ahead and pause this video if you need to to finish this or wait until the end of the video to complete this assignment. Okay. So we know that water is recycled within the earth and it keeps going um, in circles and it's being recycled within the earth. But we still have the question, where does water come from? Where does it come from? So we know it's within the earth, but how does it get to our house? Luckily, I have a friend that had that same question and he asked his friends and his teacher and he's going to help us find our answer. His name is Sid the Science Kid. All done. Hello and good morning, scientists. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I was thinking, did you know that the amount of water on Earth hasn't changed since water first appeared billions of years ago? But where does all this water come from? I mean, has it always been in the faucet? I have a great idea. I'm going to go ask my friends. Okay. Here I come. Hello, Gerald. Hi, Sid. I have a question for you guys. <laughs> okay, we can help. What's the question? Uh, do you know where water comes from, May? Gosh, water. I'll tell you what I know. Well, when water is heated by the rays of the sun, it evaporates into the air and turns into a cloud. <laughs> That's good information. Thanks, May. You're welcome, Sid. Can you tell me what happens once the water forms a cloud? Yes, I can. The water from the cloud falls back to the earth in the form of rain or snow or as hail. Pretty soon we'll know all there is to know about water. Thanks. You got it, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Gabriella. Yes? Can you tell me what happens to the water after it rains? When the rain falls, it waters the earth. It also fills the streams and lakes with fresh water. The rest of the water evaporates and floats up to become clouds. And then the cycle of water begins again. But I still don't know where the water in my faucet comes from. Okay, scientists, time to come inside so we can investigate together. Oh, I'm going to ask teacher Susie. So, the water cycle. That's when the heat of the sun changes the water into a cloud. And that cloud fills up with water until it falls as rain, filling rivers and streams. Oh, oh yeah! Right, right. But before the water gets to your houses, it goes through many steps. In the first step, do they have to go find the water? Yes, there's a place called a water treatment plant that collects water from outside. Hey, does that mean the water we drink comes directly from lakes and rivers? Yes, but first they have to check to make sure the water is clean enough to drink. And that's what the water treatment plant does. It cleans the water so that the water we drink is safe. Oh! I get it, Teacher Susie. But where does all the clean water go? When the drinking water comes out of the plant, it's pumped into a big reservoir or a water tower. Cool! Once it's been stored in the reservoir, then all that clean drinking water is sent to all of our homes using pipes. Okay, so could you tell us how they work, please? Pipes are tubes that go underground or in the walls of houses. They bring us running water when we turn on the faucet. Yay! I love water! That's good, but you know, some countries do not have enough water to pipe into their homes. So remember, water is precious. Oh, yeah! 
Water is a special gift, and we really can't afford to waste it. Can I count on you scientists to do your part? Yes! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. great. Now that you know all about the water cycle, let's all help the Earth together and not waste any precious water. We learned a lot from Sid the Science Kid. I'm so excited. Now, do you think you can answer the question, where does water come from? Hmm. What you'll need right now is your journal and a pencil so you can answer the question. So go ahead and pause this video and then click play again once you're ready to go. All right, our question is, where does water come from? And you're going to write a sentence. Here's a sentence stem for you. Water comes from blank. As a reminder, I have a capital letter at the beginning of my sentence, spaces between my words, and a period at the end of my sentence to tell the reader that you are done writing. Go ahead and answer this question on your journal um, and then share it with your teacher. Then, once you're done, click on the next video so you can do the experiment with Ms. Ramirez.